Hello, happy Thursday night. The last Thursday in October. This month has flown past. So how is everyone? It is so good to see you. Let's see who's here. Nancy's here. Yay. Marsha, first lady here. She's our hostess with the mostess. And Nancy's here. Debbie's here. Hey. And I was so glad you got to spend time with your grandchildren the other day. That was really special. And let's see. Uh, Mitty. And Mitty, I'm so sorry the other day you were here and I didn't realize. If I ever don't give you a shout out, please know it's old eyes. They're tired. They don't always catch everything. But you are very welcome. We love seeing you. And our Cheryl is here. So what a great, great day. Well, just know that when I go back and check the chat to see what I missed, I always realize you're there, and it makes me smile. So we're really happy to see all of you. And Cheryl, oh, it doesn't really show, but I'm wearing my, whoops, didn't mean that. I'm wearing my fight pin, and I've got this pin right here because... It is still October, and October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And since we have a Miss Jody, we really do care. We've got a good number of members who have dealt with breast cancer in their lifetime. And I'm here to tell you, get checked, do your mammograms. It's much better to know. Sometimes we want to put our head in the ground, but that doesn't help you. And with the new treatments now, it doesn't have to be as frightening as it used to be way back in the day. So I think Cheryl would agree with me is get diagnosed early and, and fight hard and get your treatment. And good things will happen. So, and you can join me and how many of the rest of us who are cancer survivors. And that's a great thing to be. All right. So, sorry, just had to, it's the end of the month. You know how the radio stations do. Get all your public service announcements in. So, we do our bit. Also, I voted. I voted early. And so I feel good. I did my part. We'll see what happens. But I know I did my part. Because you know what? It's hard to be able to complain and stuff if you don't go vote. So that's it for me. Um, I was wondering if I would be on tonight because I had a migraine kind of threatening. It's like, oh. Oh, but I'm lucky. Mark said, take Tylenol, hon. I thought, oh, I don't think Tylenol is going to help, but it did. So I still feel that feeling. You know how you get a little like pressure in your head? I still feel that, but it hasn't hit. So I am so glad. While we're taking care of business, let me tell you right now that... Yes, I, it is a great thing to survive. And it's so funny. When I was younger, I used to be terrified of cancer. And I spent all this time worrying about it. Nothing ever. I never found out anything until I was 64. And all those years I spent worrying. And now with modern medicine... I can relax. And I, I, Michelle Lang, there's a lot of good people here who have been very brave and dealt with it. Our Miss Cheryl is a very active volunteer in the breast cancer awareness movement. And our Debbie Dingle is a very big fan. And we thank her very much. So we just need people to, to pay attention and people to know. So, okay, um, but it's good to see you. So, so far, I'm okay, and uh, I was waiting to see what this headache would do. 
<laughs> but I am here and it might even help a little bit. You know, when you get your endorphins going, I, I was sitting there earlier today and my arthritis was hurting and I was feeling sorry for myself because this time of year, if you raise your hand, if you have arthritis, this time of year when the weather changes and the um, barometric pressure fluctuates, oh my goodness, do I ache. So in fact, I had one of my finger splints on today. These things give me a lot of comfort when my arthritis is hurting. So I'll have to show you again next week how I take koozies and turn them into finger splints that give me just enough compression that keep the joints warm. Um, I learned this because I have that trigger finger thing where sometimes in the morning my finger wants to get stuck. And so I ordered some finger braces and I saw the soft things that came on the inside to go. And I thought I used them and loved them. And I can still move around. It doesn't fall off during the night. So I figured out how to take a koozie because it's the neoprene and how to cut it and sew it. And so now I have bunches of finger splints. And I think I'm going to start to use one on that finger because it's sore. But y'all didn't come here to listen to my arthritis pains. <laughs> but I've got to tell you. Staying busy, staying active is the best thing because I think otherwise I would turn into stone. <laughs> so it is a good thing. Keep those joints moving. So I've been really busy today on my fabric embellishment and I wanted to show you about something. I was trying to do most of it by hand, but I said I really need to get more done before tonight. And so I want to show you what you can do if you want to sew on this on your machine. Because I did some stitching in these points. Let me get it up close enough and see if you can see it. I did zigzag stitching. No, I didn't actually. I did straight stitching. I did zigzag on the little curves, but straight stitching in those points. It is really hard, even with the interfacing fuse to the back of the fabric, it's really hard to try to push it back and forth. And you can put the gloves on and stuff, but it's mainly the fabric itself. That and the in interfacing is not really stiff enough. You don't want to do this stitching if you already have the batting and the backing because you don't want all this stuff showing up on the back of your quilted work. I mean, it, it leaves a lot of thread. So what I did is I went and got one of my low-sided hoops and put it on backwards, okay? And if you can see, then it leaves you a nice little dish. This way, when you put it underneath your sewing machine needle, and you do the work inside, it rests on the sewing bed. So just remember, take your little hoop, put it on backwards, tighten it really good. It makes it so much easier. Also, if you have arthritis, it's a lot easier to move this than to try to grip the fabric. So I, I left it this way to show you. See right here. So this way the fabric lies flat. If you put it in the normal way, then you have a gap back here. And that doesn't work for the sewing machine. But anyway, I used to stress with, well, how do I put it in there so it's right? Just put it on backwards, Deb. Real easy. <laughs> so I like teaching you um, things that it took me a while to learn. <laughs> Although knowing you, you learned it much faster. I'm going to clip a few little threads and then show you what I've been doing. And show you the difference that it makes on the fabric. Okay. Here, I think I got most of them. Remember how I told you, do not sew the beads on until after it's quilted and the thread painting? Well, 
I wanted, I was anxious and I wanted to show you how beautiful beads can be on fabric. So I put some beads on here. And then when I was doing the thread painting of another area that bumps up to it, I broke several of the beads. Those little um, metallic inexpensive beads. Let me see if I can show you. I had no idea they're made of plastic. I thought they were little metal beads, but they're made of plastic, which I'm grateful for now because they just broke at, when the needle hit them and it didn't damage my needle. But these, the little ones are plastic. They all probably are. So, but I wanted to just show you, I wanted to have enough on here that you could kind of see where I'm going with this. And uh, so I put the beads on early and I'm going to have to take them off and do them all over again once it's quilted and I'm done with the thread painting. So now I'm going to bring you down and show you what I have been doing. All right, let me see. Mark says that this this thing war handle works. I just have to get it right. So let's see. All right. Well, um, and before we go to, I'm going to give you some pictures. I have been gathering photos of other types of fabric embellishment and hand embroidery. All right, let's see. Oh, please work. Okay. Yay. All right. Now, let me bring in this other lamp because it's not enough light for you to see it well. All right. Here we go. All right. I took some nubby yarn and this had like little red flames in fact let me show you what this looked like before here it was before and hi jazzy joyce hon here it is now now let me bring it a little closer so you can see the difference that's before here is after. And if you could see it in person, it would even make more sense. But it just kind of brings it alive. It just bumps it up a notch. So I'm going to zoom in for a moment. So I put a nubby yarn here where there were little red flames. Right here where the little red flames are. I put that in. I did a little bit of freehand stitching and gold right here just to have a little bit of a pop there. I took and hand did some nice shiny um, rayon green and gold here. I did hand stitching of a satin red rayon here. And then this is gold to, to accent the star. So this, it just brings it forward. Then I took that rayon red and I did like an elongated X over the red areas. And here are my gold beads. I put one where every star was. Well, you can see that when I started sewing this, I broke a few off, so I will have to take those off and do it again. Now, I love the sewing I did on this. Let me show you. This is where it you really see. Whoops, this is gone. Oh, I know. I, I forgot. Okay, I'm zoom, zoom out just a little bit. You see this is a little pale, but this has a shimmer to it. Let me now zoom back in. I love that shimmer. And it's a gold colored rayon. I love embroidery thread. If you ever want to sell your embroidery thread, I will buy it from you for a good deal. Because <laughs> you know I'm cheap. But I started to do this by hand. And I thought, this is taking too long. 
So I put it in the hoop and I went in and I just stitched back and forth, back and forth all over these little arrows. Then I did a zigzag around this. I love that blue. I'm not sure if I've got something to highlight that or not. It's really pretty. And then I'm going to put some of more of the gold balls. I, this is the tiny one. Then I've got one that's a little bigger and then one that's a little bigger. So I'm just going to embellish this. Then don't forget, I'm going to take my batting and I'm going to cut a circle this size. I'm going to take a little bit of white glue with a couple dots and I'm going to put it back here and just lay it on here. Then I'm going to I'm going to cut batting this size, the whole size, and then I'm going to put that on top the little one first, then this one. And here where I've got these scalloped areas, I'm going to put some scallop shapes on these. Depending on how fluffy I want things to look, will determine whether I do one layer or two. That is happy birthday to Sean in Virginia Beach. Barbara Smith is here. Polly Thompson. Hey, Polly, I talked to my daughter today. I was thinking next week. Thursday, I think that's the first day of the warehouse sale, that maybe we could kind of go early and then grab some lunch afterwards. So I'll talk to you before that, sweetie. But I didn't know if Thursday's good for you. My daughter's coming up Thursday afternoon, and she's going to spend all day Friday with me. So I thought, whoop, better go Thursday. And so anyway, but I'm going to do be gluing polyester batting in these shapes on the back. Now, the reason I do that, it's a very easy form of terpunto. So once I put all my little pieces of batting, then I'm going to lay an entire sheet of batting over the back, then put my backing fabric, and then quilt it. And um, that way, it's going to give life to this. In fact, let me see if I can. It is going to bring this to life. And I'm even thinking of doing a stitch in here to have kind of that wavy edge. But I'm very excited. So now let me come back. Let me make sure I'm out. I think I'm out. All right. I'm going to show you some things that I've gathered to use as embellishment on this quilt. This quilt, this fabric, I mean, it's going to be a quilt, but this fabric is all about golds, 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 golds. Okay, let me see. Yeah, now it's brightening up. Okay. And so I have this. And this is what you use to make a bow for Christmas. But it's very soft, easy to sew through. So this would be a good embellishment. I can cut it to the width that I want. Okay. Then I'm going to take, this has wire along the outer edge, but inside is just a um, plastic and like a tinsel kind of material. So I can cut this and use this places. I just have to avoid the outside edge. Okay. Now, I thought, what kind of lace can I use on here? Because I'm not sure I'm going to want to use anything too lacy lace. But I thought, like, over here, in a place like this, maybe, I'm not sure, but then I could come maybe here and put some lace. I have to see if it even fits. This is such a busy fabric, it may not fit. But then I've got some black sequins because I have areas like this and in the center here that a sequin, I think, would do really nicely. Speaking of sequins, 
let me, I do believe I have some white sequins, which I may not use in this, but I, if I want to, if I just want small amount of white, I could take, you know how to, uh, you can just pull these right off like this, but I could put a sequin everywhere this off-white is, just to give it just a little bit of shine. All right, now, let me see. Here was the nubby yarn that I used, and I actually got it in a needle. So, if you use a big embroidery needle. Then, here are some, I went looking in my scrap yarn, and I looked for colors, like right here, in some of these lighter blue areas, this might be right pretty. And then I've got some pink that I'm not sure this would work, but it might, it might work in some places. And then this is wonderful. And you just couch this, which means you lay it on the fabric and you do a zigzag to hold it down. So now let me put these aside because I'm trying to show you in groups of things what I'm going to be using. I also have, I also have some blue sequins that I'm going to get to use. Here are some teal sequins. Here are some wonderful beads. Now these are small enough that I'm going to have to use a beading needle to put these on. All right, so then here's another trim. I can couch this trim on, and this will be wonderful. Um, like right around this one, or right, it could even go right around these. And it just will really highlight the design. So that's one of my trims. So now I think you've seen most of my trims. I also have some of this tatting thread with the little metallic sheen that I can use if I want. Now, then I've got black thread. Look at this beautiful, I'm not sure what you would call this, like a deepest, deepest teal or ocean blue. I think in some places this would be wonderful. Then here is some shiny, and I'm pretty sure this is polyester, Mettler Poly Sheen, and it is just beautiful. Black thread just for general purposes, and of course, the navy blue for some of the navy areas. But then, a while back, these are pearl, pearl satin threads, and I bought these because they were on a closeout sale. But if you look at some of these colors, especially if I'm going to do hand sewing, like I saw a lighter blue, I could use this for the lighter blue and then go in with a navy. Here is some creamy white. I don't really think I need pink. I'm not, don't think there's a pink in here. But, and you know what? I thought there, I thought for sure there was purple, but there's not purple. So I won't need that. Oh, and then look at this stuff. This is a nice thick one. That'll show up really good in all the green areas. So I just went through my drawers of things that I've accumulated over the years. And tried finding. Now, I haven't even shown you yet some of my charms and things I'm going to use. So, I will get that the next time we're here. My daughter gave me these for my birthdays. And this is metallic uh, red or burgundy. This is a blue. This is silver, green, gold, and a rainbow. So, these will be good to use. And those work even better by hand. Here are some of the threads I picked out. I know right now, take the purple out. This doesn't have any purple in it. And I have so many different kinds of beads. I will be using a lot of very fine seed beads. Here is a beautiful pearl metallic thread. Then I've got 
some gold metallic thread. These work really well by hand. Here is, well, actually, this is silver. This is the pearl. Pearl, silver, gold. There's this gold that I had from, this is good if you want to use it in the machine. All right, so let me put these back in the bag. Then I've got the holographic glitters. And we know I don't need pink because there's no pink. Here's red and here's green. Then this is a beautiful red, nice rayon thread. Look at this sulky green. Isn't that beautiful? And just a regular non-metallic green. Then another blue, and this is a woolly nylon. Because there's a medium blue, this woolly nylon would give it some great texture. Debbie wrote, so, oh, Jody's here. Hi, Miss Jody. So look at this beautiful, on the places where I have a navy, look at that navy. Isn't this beautiful? So now you see why when people have a giveaway table, I always go and look for threads first. This is coming across orange, but I do have orange on here and I do, and this is really red. Then here we go. This is, oops, yep. This, I do have some areas that, that read a little orange. So I'm going to save that one for those areas. This is the thread I used right here. And look at this. Isn't that pretty? So there are some areas that are a little bit lighter, like some of the things in here. I might use this. You know, one thing I want to get is that vinyl you put around spools that sticks to itself to keep them from untang getting tangled, <laughs> unwinding. But this is a wonderful, it's kind of, uh, it's a a little bit of a thick thread with that's wound with metallic. I think that would be really beautiful. In the medium blues, I also have it in the navy blue and in a greenish, yellowish greenish. And then another just regular spool of gold. Oh, one more. And this is Sulky All-Purpose 30 Weight, so it's a little heavier. And I love the satiny colors in that one. So, as you can see, I've spent some time really going through all of my tubs and bags of stuff everywhere. And except for the purple mistake, I think I've got quite a few things that will embellish this. So, <clears throat> beads and threads and, whoop, now see this here, this little tiny bead just came right off. So, I've got a couple more in my pocket. What's, this is one of these things that each step builds on the next. This project is growing. <laughs> well, it's like, I, if I'm going to do it, I've got to make it interesting. It's got to be worth my time. The fabric itself is beautiful. So, what am I going, how am I going to gild this lily? Which is kind of what I'm doing. But one more time, I'm going to zoom in just a little and let you see the difference and the difference there is the fabric before and here it is after and it's just a matter of the embellishing bringing it to life and then I will probably glue this onto a canvas like a painting canvas and glue it onto that and that's how I'll display it but it gives me an opportunity to try different kinds of embroidery and stitches. And it's honestly, it's something to give, my, to give me a little deep breath between, uh, give me a little deep breath between all of the complicated projects we've been doing. Because 
I get worn out sometimes. I'm not as young as I used to be. So, but I'm still here and still enjoying the process, enjoying the creativity. Uh, so, now, oh, so I was going to tell you a change in plans, and I told you real quickly about um, Polly and I are going to Pineapple Fabrics next week, and there's a sweet little restaurant in town I thought I would take her to. And and she had uh, Polly had said that she could drive. And if you want to, that's fine. That whatever works good for you, hon. And uh, told Mark, I'm gonna buy some fabric. I have not bought fabric in person in three years. So, woo. <laughs> but I promise I gotta be good. And you know, I got plenty here. It's not that I'm in need of anything, but it'll be fun. And I can't wait to see it in person. So, okay. Um, I'm going to take you and show you different ideas of hand, mostly hand embroidery that people have done for years to add excitement and joy to fabric, make it match, whatever. <laughs> Listen, I have at time, I, in the past, when I first started going to Pineapple Fabrics, I spent like $250, but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I tell you what, if you want to think about you know, getting sick like I did, not knowing the outcome at first, made me real, really think about all this, you know, at what point do I stop buying all these supplies, and at what point do I start making all the stuff that I had stacked up in the closet, so that's what I'm working on now, so let me turn off the light and show you some things I found, so, all right, here we go. And I'll keep looking to see how young at heart. Yes, I am. I, I call it that I'm very much in touch with my inner child. So <laughs> I will cop to that. That's for sure. So it's so funny. I wanted to grow up so fast. And now I'm like, no, 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 no. Now I'm going to slow down. <laughs> I was just going way too fast. And now I want to enjoy myself my hard work is over the raising my kids and all of that we are definitely going to take the camera with us in fact you know what that would be nice if she drove because then that way um i can worry about filming it and filming it while we're there oh this will be fun so i'm looking forward to thank you polly for going with me it's going to be very nice whoops okay so, embellished fabric. Here we go. All right. Oh, and Sunday I'll show you what I'm doing with, um, let me delete this. I, I'll show you what quilt pattern I decided to make my miniature quilt out of. So, I finally decided. Looked and looked and looked. So, here we go. Okay. I wish I could figure out how. I, I, I think it'll come kind of close to doing a slideshow. But look at this embellishment. You can take a simple piece of fabric and turn it into something magical. Now, this is nothing new to people like our Linda McCollum, like our Carol, Magical Carol. This is nothing to talented ladies like that. And the rest of us, we're catching up. Now, you know what I think these little, these dots are? I think that is metallic paint, like I have been using the last year, and you just paint a dot and let it dry. Isn't that a great idea? Because I was thinking, how could that be a bead? Or, I don't know, I'm looking again, it might be sequins that are upside down, you know, the cup-shaped sequins. But that is wonderful. So this is just to give you an idea of, you know, I, 
I don't necessarily follow what other people do on theirs, but like right down here, I see the sequins with a tiny seed bead on top. That reminds me, yes, combine my sequins with seed beads. But look at all these wonderful trims. This is wonderful. So layers, trims, okay. Look at this. And they have used paint, and now they're embellishing on top of the paint. And look at this, the seed beads along these leaf shapes down here. So I love the Internet. I tell you what, I'd rather give up my washing machine than the Internet. Because, oh, how, what would I do if I didn't have all these wonderful ideas? Isn't this cute? We did an undersea thing. Um, oh, gosh, I guess two years ago. Look, at there's a turtle charm. See how you can use other bits, metal bits and things to bring in? Look at this wonderful use of a ruffle, a piece of ruffled trim. There's an octopus. Got to be Miss Jody. And then here is like a little mirror-type um, flat sequin that they have done the blanket stitch around to hold it in place. They have taken and put, put real shells. They've got buttons and sequins and beading. I just love this. Absolutely love it. And here is a starfish, and it looks like that's a hand embroidered. You know where you make the different legs, and then you weave around it, kind of like I do with the dorset buttons. And here, couching those fancy yarns, and then doing some hand stitching. So I love just showing you all of these ideas. And even if you don't do this project right now, at some point, you'll remember this and say, ooh, I'm going to try this. And this is really interesting. The larger stitching, doing a design on a fabric, and then embellishing it with buttons and beads. Really, really nice. Look at this. Look at this peacock. Simple as stitching out the lines of the feathers and then putting sequins with little beads on the top. And then these are teardrop shaped bead and the body is embroidered. So, you know, you can do some really creative things with very little money, just a, a certain amount of time. This looks like it's like a cheesecloth or something over top or maybe um, a real loose little piece of old piece of lace or embroidery. I just love all of this. Look at this K facet. Isn't that awesome? And that's where you take the fabric. The fabric's already, the design is already in the fabric. And you pump it up with all kinds of stitching and beads and buttons. Just anything you can. And it brings the fabric alive. I love this part of a seascape with the fish buttons, the hand embroidery, the little bits of lace, the shells, the I, I don't know how that um, starfish is made, but it almost looks like an, uh, an applique pre-bought that you put on. But I love these little pearl button fish. That's wonderful. It's like making little treasures. Let me bring this up. This is four different examples of things you can do. Look at this mesh lace that they have taped down. I mean, tacked down with thread and then embellished. I love all of this. So I just, I love, especially on our Art Quilt Thursdays, this is about expanding our creativity, bringing in ideas and methods that we might not have thought about before. This is all beading. Look at this. Look at this beading. 
These are buttons. Isn't that fabulous? This, some kind of bead that were sewn in there. So I just love it. Look at this one. Beautiful hollyhocks on a painted background. And look at just little round pieces of fabric that are tacked in the center with a contrasting thread. It takes time, but what a beautiful result. This is a drawing just to kind of show you that this would be the fabric, but then you could take and hand embroider a hummingbird on top. So you don't have to just follow the outline. You can add things to it. Look at this. This is just pure eye candy. There is so much to look at. I'm going to give you a moment because I can't even tell you everything. I mean, backs of covered buttons. That's a covered button back. I mean, just all kinds of things. And how many of us have those little tiny drawers that you have a little bit of a snap here or not a full set of buttons there? Charm that you thought, oh, and I'm, I got it. I had collected a sewing, uh, a charm bracelet, all based on sewing. I thought I lost it. I found it the other day. So I'm so excited. I love all the butterflies, all the beading. I mean, there's a lot of beading in this. Isn't that great? Look at this. The colors and the depth. This has wool roving on it. You know, you can felt on your fabric, too. And you can do that without special tools. Just take a little needle and keep jabbing it into the fabric uh, until it stays. And then there are buttons and big sequins and pearl beads and all kinds of wonderful things. You might have a brooch given to you or a necklace that you don't wear anymore, but you could take the highlighted piece off of it and add it to some of your fabric artwork. This is how this person has put one of the little mirror sequin-like things onto their fabric. And what they've kind of done is, 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 a, is really a weave with your needle and thread to hold it in place. Look at all of these charms, pieces of necklace, earrings, buttons, you name it, they've got it on here. Little snippets of lace. Because, you know, us, us sewers, we don't throw away anything. <laughs> and this just shows taking, they piece the fabric together. And then by the stitching and the embellishing with yarns and large stitch quilting, look how they have turned that into something. Oh, this one. I couldn't believe this one. Look at all those pearls. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? And then the beading around the pearls. Oh, my goodness. This is extraordinary. This looks, I, I would assume this is something made in India. It is exquisite. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. It's a lot of beads and rhinestones. Mm. Look at this sea urchin. This is, whoops, let me get it to enlarge. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? All with embellishing. These are sequins with seed beads on top. I imagine that is beautiful in person. Here is a giant button that they've used beadwork to attach to the fabric that has other little beads on it and sewing that gives movement and design. Isn't that amazing? Look at these beads lined up. 
There are so many ways you can embellish fabric. Now, some, most of these people are taking a plain fabric and, and the embellishment is all of theirs. But just to start us out on this, this looks like it could be a, a good book. Embellish your quilts with hand embroidery. Create whimsy. Uh, I just saw the picture and thought, show them that too. Now, whoops. Come on. Okay. And look at these dragonfly wings. Beautiful. But it's just learning to think outside the box, learning how to imagine something you hadn't thought of before. This is the this is ribbon embroidery here. And then the hand embroidery, the thread embroidery. So if you have any silk ribbons, good thing to use. Look at these beads. And this is on indigo fabric. So pretty to pretty pedestrian jeans like look fabric. But look how it's been dressed up with the thread work. Look at that movement. And then the beads. Pretty, pretty amazing. This is just to remind you, this was from the Alex Anderson hand embroidery event last year. Some of the things are reminiscent of Sue Spargo. She's done so much to bring hand embroidery to the forefront. And I'm pretty sure this is a Sue Spargo too. Isn't that wonderful? I love the, the sense of play and fun and joy that comes from working hand embellishing fabric or machine embellishing. I'm not going to tell you which way to do it because I, I've used both so far. The machine is faster. But I love that kind of stitch. It's like a ladder stitch. I love that. Look at this. It looks like it's all done with stitching. As if you laid a piece of ribbon down. Look at this flower. I mean, there's so many beads in this. Here is a real good example of embellishing, all kinds of embellishing. I told y'all last year, this was going to be my year to learn about embellishing. This is a crazy quilt, and boy, can you, that, to me, the crazy quilt movement represented the best of embellishment. Little snippets of lace. You know, the cigar bands, silk cigar bands, the hand embroidery, the, the wonderful stitches, the buttons, oh, just everything. Everything they could throw at it, they did. And it is just wonderful. Little bits of hand crochet or tatting, anything they've had sitting around. Isn't that amazing? So I'm hoping this has given you an idea. Some more Sue Spargo, it looks like. Look at this crazy quilt. Isn't that uh, perfection? I told myself I want to go out and buy some of these little decorative ribbons. I don't have enough of these, you know, things with little flowers, little satin flowers. So I'm going to be looking for some of that. And look at this embellish. Look at the careful, gentle threads. You just tack, and then it goes this way, tack it, back this way, tack it. I mean, that is just beautiful. And I would use, I would mark it with something you know will come off, but that is just beautiful. And, you know, if you, like me, did any kind of um, curtain work or upholstery work, you have some trims left over. Think of using those for your fabric. Look at this. Isn't that great?
So it's very easy. Oh, this was cute. Talk about charms. Uh, uh, this, this is a charm of a pan, like a cast iron skillet. The lace on this apron that's appliqued on. How cute. There's another, a pillow done with the crazy quilting style. I love this because they have these charms on here and all of the threads and little wispy bits of organza or tool that they've used to give texture. Here is just a little piece of cotton tape that they ruched up and put beads on. <coughs> I love this book. That's a neat thing that it might be fun to make a little embellishment book. Kind of put your best ideas. Here is another part of this quilt where they used buttons for peanut butter and jelly. How cute. Okay. Another crazy quilt. Look at this. The beading. There are beads here. I'm not sure what kind of trim that is. This is hand embroidery up here with some beads. But you just take something simple and you make something special. This is fabric that's been hand painted. Come on. Hand painted and then just some big stitches accentuates it. Oh, and I want to do something with a bunch of lace. I'm even thinking how wonderful to start pulling out the antique linens I have and embellish them so they can become something really special. Little snippets of lace, hand crochet, little trims. Look at this. Ah, oh, this is a simple old-fashioned ribbon ruched up with beading and all of that put on it. Okay. And here is machine couching. There's a nice foot. You just run the yarn through that. And then when you stitch it, you zigzag it down, stitch it down. And that's called couching. And this is exquisite. This is very old. Again, using laces. Because we all have boxes of linens with little lace edges that our grandmothers or great-grandmothers took the time to make when they lived a whole lot more plainer than we did and they made their beautiful things. I love this. It's all pieced fabric that looks like it has been sponge painted and then embellished. You could even embellish it and then paint sponge paint over it. And look at this. That reminds me of when we used to take and put a black crayon over and then scratch out the design it would show through. That is so sweet. Okay, here's another one. I think we're probably about done. But I just thought, whoops, I would show you. Here is a lot of embellishment with buttons and charms and beads. So it's fun. To me, this is a lot of fun. I am not as excited about doing the big quilt any as much. And look at this. Look at this wonderful ruched up lace. I mean, satin ribbon. And then this lace. And then all the, the hand embroidery knots and little just... It's just beautiful, little tiny beads to decorate. So, putting buttons on, laces. All right. And this was fascinating, too. This one, let me see if I can get it to open up. Look how, this looks like something Miss Linda would do. But I love how just stitches across, stitching the 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 fabric down together, putting buttons in the corners, then taking and weaving through ribbons with writing on it. I mean, there's so many things you can do. Let your creativity, your creativity take you. Look at this 
piece. It looks like almost like a pottery button. Look at that with the nice big stitches. I just love all this. Look at this. That if this makes you happy, you can't help but feel happy when you see that. And the beads are great bubbles. Look at this. Mm. Look at this. Look at those old. They, these are some amazing sequins. And the beadwork. Oh, beautiful. And don't forget, Rick Rack. It's a great old-fashioned embellishment. Look at this. Just simple. Simple beads. Simple big stitches. I'm loving that. And here's just pom-pom trim. But I'm loving that young people. And ha do you have any old doilies? I hate to say this, but you could cut them up and use them, you know, just zigzag the edges, cut them up, and use them to decorate fabric. But it's better than leaving them stuck in a drawer. Don't forget, yarn is a wonderful thing. Look at yo-yos. They are wonderful. There's all kinds of things. Satin ribbons. And I think we're just about... I love all these big stitches with yarn and stuff. So, there we go. Let me turn back on my lamp. I hope you got some good ideas so that when you work on your embellishing fabric, you'll think of some of them. And say, you know, I never thought about doing that. That's a good idea. So, anyway. Because if you, if you, you could take almost anything and just stitch it down. So, like I have from the lake, little pieces of pink quartz that I thought were so pretty. As long as I stitch it down, I can put those little pebbles in. So now let me come back to you. Close out my pictures. Any questions before we go? And I have tried to start to tell you this three times and haven't told you this yet. So my daughter's coming up next Thursday, and it's going to spend Friday with me, so there'll be no show next week. Keep working on your embellishment, and when we come back, we will handle that. And I've got a retreat coming up in November, too, the week before Thanksgiving, so I won't be doing a show probably that day either. But um, keep working on your embellishment. Then when I come back next time, I'll show you what I've done to that point. And we're going to start probably some holiday decorations. Tell me what you think. But with our art quilt style, I'm thinking, how can we incorporate a little holiday in it? So be thinking. If you have some ideas, you let me know. But for right now... The next time we get together, not next Thursday, which is like November 3rd, not next Thursday, but the next, I'll be back. And let's, I'll show you what I've gotten done. If you are doing any of this work, send me pictures and just send me a picture to, I've gotten some great pictures. Our time to quilt at pwc.com. Let me put my glasses on and make sure it was right. Yes. Kim Hicks is here. Yay, Kim. Oh, this is so nice to see all of you. Thank you so much. Um, complete dolls. My, my granny pair is right back there. I still haven't finished the wings for... And I do have a Victorian gown that I'm working on. So when I come back, which should be like November 10th, when I come back for that one, I hope to have something very special. Yeah, November 10th will be our next show. I hope to have something very special to show you then. All right. Any questions, please? And we will take a video of the trip um no sundays are fine um my daughter's coming next thursday and staying with me 
Thursday evening and Friday. And then Saturday, we're going to my grandson's last comp band competition. I can't wait. And my daughters come down to see it because, you know, we're a marching band family, let me tell you. And so I'll have both my daughters going to my grandson's competition. Can't wait. So we won't have a show on November 3rd, but we will have one November 10th. And our Sunday shows for right now, they're still good to go. Okay. I will let you know if I'm not going to do one. So I'll let you know really good. All right. Um, anything else? It is so good. Yes, Polly and I are going to be girls out on the town. Pineapple Fabrics, it's the warehouse. Normally, they're not open. It's the warehouse sale. So, and use, and they have their, Polly, are you ready for this? They have fabric by the pound, and it's usually a great deal. <laughs> so, when you can go buy fabric by the pound, not ton, not ton, pound, <laughs> not kilo. <laughs> So anyway, but we'll take we'll take pictures and I'll see if I can get it. I've got so many films that I haven't finished um, editing. So I'll try. I'll do better. All right, everyone. Oh, here. Ah, uh, thank you, hon. And I will see you Sunday and have a good next couple of days. I hope this weather settles down soon because my Arthur is hurting. <laughs> Take good care. And Jody, I hope you are spoiling yourself rotten, sweetheart. And uh, I'll see you Sunday. Take good care of yourself. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. I'll see you on the 10th. Let's see what I have done by then. <laughs>